Hello and welcome to the show. Today I am going to be putting a NASCAR engine inside for transit because why not? And then we're going to take it racing around a wet racing circuit, probably end up on its side, maybe on its roof. I'm kind of curious though to see how the how the transit will fare. I have taken quite a while ago the Vandura around the autocross course, but I haven't taken any of the vans around this uh, or for a city car build. So yeah, we're gonna see how the transit will do. The engine, as I said, we're gonna have lots of power. We're gonna have almost a thousand horsepower in this transit, which is. Yeah, quite a, quite quite a lot going on there. We will have full Forza Aero. We are wanting any bit of control that we can get, pretty much. With the transit, all things considered, it's not actually too bad uh, on on here, but it's still going to be a giant van. We're going to have some racing tyres uh, on the thing. Now, the plus point of a vehicle like this because it's still going to be relatively heavy by the time I've finished with it, it might actually be quite stable. A 295 front tyres, a massive and 325s on the rear. That's surprisingly good amounts of, uh, of tyre width. I wasn't quite expecting that on the Transit. That could help our cause as well. We're going for... Well, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to have stability in this. We could... And this is kind of part part of the part of the reason why I'm building this. We could kind of potentially see it beat the likes of the Caterham. That sounds stupid, but the Caterham was absurdly twitchy and very difficult to control. And while yes, a Transit has no right in beating a Caterham around a racetrack because of the nature of these builds, the cars being so crazy. If this Transit can be a bit more controllable, can be more consistent, and can be a bit stabler, there is a possibility there is just this small possibility and that is relying on a lot of things like the van actually handling okay and that's a big ask for a transit however it's not completely without uh, the realms of possibility that it might actually be all right as strange as that sounds putting a thousand horsepower engine in a transit it could it could be <laughs> could be okay we are not quite up into S-Class. We're going to have low PI in this vehicle. I'm thinking with these, yeah, with the restrictions taken off, we do get into S-Class. It's a low S-Class vehicle, but it is still up there. So near enough 1,000 horsepower, near enough 800 torque weights, 3,800 pounds. I'm hoping slash thinking that this might throw up a little bit of a surprise if, if it can be controllable, and that is a, a fairly big if. Right, let's go and try and not roll a van. Of course, to test out the transit, we have come to the Virginia International Raceway, where it is going to get five laps around the Patriot alternate layout in the hope that it might cause an upset or two. Now, that upset's not going to be at the top of the table. The NASCAR, the Bugatti Veyron, Lamborghini Diablo, their 107s are unlikely, completely unlikely to be troubled by the transit. Where I'm hoping this might throw up an upset is further down the table. If we could get it in the 111s, that would be quite nice. That is a big ask. That is a very big ask indeed for a transit. I, I just feel like maybe we could do something with this vehicle. The traction is really good. That got a very, very good start. It's up to 140 miles an hour before getting on the brakes for turn one. Now the concerns for this vehicle are, oh, well, brakes, there is a lot of mass to get slowed down. I'm hoping having some bigger front tyres might be quite nice. The other thing, this circuit that I have chosen is technical. It is a lot of low speed sections and a big van trying to fit through there could be uh, quite interesting. Also, rolling is not, uh, is not unlikely, let's face it, in a transit. The signs are not going to be a problem. We can splatter them out of the way in a vehicle this large. It's actually handling quite nicely. It's really not handling like a van. Can we get to full throttle up here, or will we just slide? Nope, we will just slide. That is kind of what... I think one car... I think the Bentley, the Continental GT, might be the only car to have got to full throttle up that section. I think the Veyron was too understeery, and everything else has been... Uh, too oversteery through there oh, around this final corner okay 
little bit scrappy end to the lap. The long gear ratios from this uh, van are helping. Okay, it's a 118 for us. Already quicker than the BMW Assetta. In fact, it is almost as quicker than the Mini Cooper from a standing start. So that is a, uh, a pretty good starting point for the transit. Don't do anything dumb through there. I thought we were going to have been the tyre bundle. I'm, I'm impressed the way it's getting turned. You know, it's that's not a great line through there, I will be honest. That is uh, slightly slightly my, my bad on that section. However, it is getting the front end turned in and carrying the same sort of speed we're seeing from some of the cars, in all honesty. We can be... I'm, I'm loving the way I can be so greedy on the curbs there and it literally doesn't bother the transit at all. We've seen quite a few cars get sort of oversteery, a bit twitchy when you run through the puddles at the, the back side of the curb. This is, just doesn't care. It just doesn't give a crap, although the understeer, that's where we're struggling to carry speed. That could be a little bit of the undoing of this van. Some of these higher speed corners, uh, or in fact that one, that one main higher speed corner, is a bit of a problem for the transit. Um, yeah, I mean, we're flat out from, from second gear. The gears are so long that it's doing relatively, relatively okay. I think a 111 might be a little bit too much to ask. What's been 162 miles an hour from a Ford Transit up towards turn one, but it's been too late on the brakes. Okay, it was worth a go. It was worth a go. I've been a little bit early the last two times around. That we can't quite get away with. We're learning. We're learning with the Ford. I think there's at least a second, perhaps, to come from this if I can get everything right. The gear, trying to decide which gear to be in is also an, an interesting one here. With the, you know, it has got very, very good traction with the long gears helping, but I don't want it to be in too high a gear for some of the really, really slow speed sections. We do still want to uh, get it going out of these corners. It's, it's doing well though. It's doing doesn't really feel like too much of a van to drive, in all honesty. It does not feel that bad around these around these corners. We've got to turn in so early. So we are losing. That's That's got to be one of the corners that's hurting the most in the fall. It's about 10-ish mm, miles an hour down. We've seen cars regularly doing 90-plus at that section, and the transit, I just can't take the speed. If I go any quicker, we're just going to understeer straight off into the grass. That was a... Pretty awful lap. All right, fire it up again. Oh, a little bit, of a little bit of bouncing, a little bit of oversteer going on there. We have now got it neatly stopped for turn one. I've actually braked a little bit too early. That was a slightly, slightly poor driving from me. I do apologise. Jumped our way across the curb. We can do better. Well, we're going to have one more lap to try and do better now. Don't be too greedy on this. That's the curb that we're going to roll it off. If we're going to roll it off any of the curbs. Uh, I want to push the van more down here, but we will just understeer towards the signs. We're going to maximum aggression across the curbs, because we can. We can get away with it, and this is the only vehicle where I think we really have been able to properly get away with that across the curbs. This is where I'm having issues. This is where we've got to be. Maybe chuck it in a little bit earlier. I uh, see. <laughs> It's still coming out with just about the same results. I just simply can't carry the speed, and we're going to go and play in the grass. Bugger it. Now, that's that lap gone. We're going to have one more attempt for the transit. Now, we will get it out of that final corner without too much problem. This is the one that's going to count. This is it. Can we get it into the 13s? I think we can. I think we should be able to with the transit get on the brakes into this first corner. We get 160 miles an hour out of the transit into, into that turn one is really very good going. That is quicker down there than the Maserati race car that sent the benchmark. Yes, the Alpha 33 was getting 200 down that section, but that's an Alpha 33. We're in a van. We're, we're in a van and doing 160 down towards the first corner here. Now, be neat and tidy. I saw the split time. Don't think about it. Don't cock it up as we throw it up this chicane. Keep it in second gear, I think, for this section. Yes, the gear ratios are long, but we don't want any more wheel spin than we absolutely have to. Come on, Transit. We can do this. Let's not piss it all away in this final sector. I'm going early on the brakes. Neat and tidy. Neat and tidy. That's what we want through there. That's absolutely spot on. Now, slow it down. 
for this second to last corner. The brakes are not the most amazing, but they are doing the job. We've run a little, little bit wide on that final path. A little difficult to actually see the turning point on the right-hand drive cars. The pillar's really in the way. Run towards the line. to 112.7. Oh, that's quicker than I thought it was. We've had two seconds on that last lap. Unfortunately, we can't quite get it into the 111s. We're going to now go try and roll it off the kerb just to see if I can do it. <laughs> um, with, well, with, the, with, the, with a modified setup, it'd be very, very easy with this standard one. I'm not quite so sure because we did actually run the kerb a couple of times and we didn't see it get up on two wheels. Let's throw it at it and see what happens. Transit, can you finish with a flurry? No, I've got a bit of oversteer at all the wrong point. Missed the kerb. That's disappointing. Okay, we'll have another go. Try again. We're not going... <laughs> I'm not having that as my uh, only attempt at rolling the rolling the van. I'm pretty pleased with that final lap, though, I will be honest. And uh, it's not even get up on two wheels. It's a little disappointing. A little disappointing from the transit. I think with the uh, thing within the wet with these vehicles, they because there isn't simply the grip, they don't actually get up on their side as easily. Oh, I did a little bit, but uh, yeah, in the wet they don't get up on their side as easily. But if they do get up, they will then roll over. Whereas in the dry, probably no problem getting on its side, but couldn't get it to complete a roll. Anyway, lap time wise, one twelve point seven is not too bad at all for a transit. It'll put the vehicle into twenty sixth place. It beats the Lamborghini LM002. It beats the Mercedes G wagon, the Rolls Royce Dawn, the Fiesta XR2. It loses out to the Ford F100, the Caterham R500, and the Lotus Elan, but here's the thing. thought it might throw up some surprises. I'd hoped it might challenge the Caterham. It didn't quite. However, around this circuit, the Transit is only a second a lap down on the Caterham. A second a lap is all that separates the Transit from a Caterham. You know, Caterham, proper track car, admittedly quite a twitchy track car in this situation, but still, <laughs> that is good going from the Transit. That is really really very very good going i'm impressed i'm impressed with it it's surprisingly easy to push the vehicle very very hard and most of that set well, a fair amount of that second at least is lost in just one corner that the the third to last corner is where we can't get the front end turned in and that's where we lose it that's where we lose the time for the transit or a fair bit of it anyway i'm in, i'm really really impressed with it now though it is time to find out just how quick this will go in a straight line. Let's face it, when it comes to a speed run, the transit is just about the worst shape imaginable for cutting through the air and trying to achieve high speeds. Nevertheless, we're going to give it a go here at Le Mans. 200 miles an hour would be nice to achieve with the transit, but it might be a, a little bit tough. Having said that, 209? Really? I'm quite... <laughs> I'm quite surprised. I mean, I, I thought we might just about get past 200, but 209? That If we can do that, I would be very... 213? Yes! Oh, wait, hold on. Do we want more of the speed, or do we want to kind of bring those gear ratios back? Because they are mega long gear ratios. Okay, maybe not quite that far back then. Uh, yeah, if we can get to... Okay, it does look about 213. It's, it's all we're going to... It's all we're going to do. If we get past 210 in a bloody van, I think that would be really very, very good going. 213.7, that will do. If we're buzzing the limiter, I'll just extend them as we go down the run, because, you know, that's perfectly how tuning works. Okay, transit, let us uh, let us set off and see, considering some of the other vehicles that have gone with similar levels of power and that I would have thought would be more aerodynamic. I guess this is a more modern vehicle than some of the other ones, so there is some aerodynamics sort of taken into consideration with the design. Not so much for, you know, the purpose of straight line speed and whatnot, but, you know, this is designed as a work vehicle, so in terms of fuel economy and, and whatnot, better aerodynamics would be would be useful, but yeah, it's still a van. <laughs> At the end of the day, yes, it might have been slightly uh, slightly better designed than some of the older vehicles, it's, it's still a van that's very much like a brick trying to uh, cut through the air but if it reckons we can get 213 i would be very if we can get 210 i would be very very happy in my transit right on to the straight we go here we're not going to be doing 200 miles an hour before the corner we are doing 167 though not too shabby it's not too shabby at all it gets up it gets, it gets going gets up to decent speed 
quite fast, and we are at 195 miles an hour now as we pass the 200. This is going quicker than a fair few vehicles have gone as we get up to 205. Come on, Transit, keep accelerating, keep accelerating. 207, I really want, I really want 210 miles an hour plus. I don't know what this is going to do when it gets to the bump at the end of the straight. Come on, one more, one more mile an hour, stop bouncing. There we go, we've done it. 210 miles an hour in a Ford Transit, 211 miles an hour in a Transit. Are we going to take off? Yes, we did massively. In fact, it's only just come back down to the ground. <laughs> that was a big flight. That was a humongous flight from the Transit. And surprisingly, only a little bump on the wall to straighten it out. 211 miles an hour in a Ford Transit and then a very, very big flight. Had a surprising performance around the around the track. <laughs> it is absolutely ridiculous, but I do quite like it. It's remarkably controllable as well. Can, again, considering what it is to be tackling a wet racing circuit, it was really not that hard to drive down the straight. It did get bounced about a little bit, and perhaps being that bit more top heavy not quite helped it when it came to the corner. Although even flying through the air sideways and landing it, it really wasn't too bad. I mean, yes, we did end up scraping the wall. Had there not been a wall there, had it been a lot wider at corner, I have no doubt we would have got it back under control again, no problem. So, yeah, it's been a remarkable, a remarkable vehicle. That speed will put the car in, to, or the van, I should say, into 45th place. Okay, it's down towards the bottom end of the table, but bear in mind that beats the Mercury Coupe, it beats the Rolls-Royce Dawn, the Fiat 595, BMW Assetta, it's only a mile an hour slower than the Alfa Romeo P3. It does lose out the Caterham R500 at the Plymouth Fury, but it's not that far down on on those sorts of uh, those sort of vehicles. Only nine miles an hour down on the McLaren 570S. Only nine miles an hour down on the McLaren. Admittedly, McLaren did have a quad rotor uh, in it, slightly less power in that one, but still, <laughs> this is a van. That's, yeah, wasn't quite expecting that much that much speed. Considering actually this has the same engine in it as the Mercury Coupe did. Same engine in this as the Mercury and it goes quicker. I would have thought the Mercury would have been a bit better aerodynamically but there we go. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much everyone for watching and until next time, uh, goodbye.